thinking about the fifth anniversary, you think about the difference between an instant and then five years of instances all built one on top of another. We decided in about 2008 that um, we were interested in applying for a Confucius Institute. Uh, trying to get a Confucius Institute was a, was a logical step for us in terms of expanding our resources and collaborations uh, concerning Chinese language, Chinese culture, and candidly it's worked out very well. It's exactly what we hoped it would do. When we started the Institute, we, we knew the big goal. The big goal is to increase the number of people who speak Chinese and who uh, know something about China. Uh, but we didn't quite know what that meant. And so we translated it into whatever we do should have long range impact and should be sustainable. We tried to find a set of activities that had real impact and that we could sustain and that would form sort of a bone structure. And I think that bone structure has been accomplished. When we began, it was five or six people. Now it's five or six hundred people. When it first started, it was this new institute that nobody knew about. And there were fewer teachers, fewer administrative helper, helpers. And it didn't seem as organized as now. People were still trying out, what are we doing here? And we weren't quite sure what it is that we were attempting to accomplish. Uh, there was nothing written down. Uh, the university had never had a partnership like this before. Uh, so we, uh, we struggled. And fortunately, the Beijing Language and Culture University sent us a magnificent leader. And she worked night and day, seven days a week. And so uh, within two years, we were no longer the Confucian Institute. We were the Confucius Institute. From the beginning, we had a vision of the Confucius Institute as being both a very integral part of the campus and a resource for the community. I first became um, involved with the Confucius Institute about two and a half, three years ago through a professor of mine uh, who just suggested it was a great way to learn more about Chinese culture. Uh, the instructors who come through the Institute have been really talented, I think really devoted to uh, uh, Chinese language education and the, the, it's a tremendous resource for us. Well what's nice is that, I mean, structure is really hard to find on your own and uh, what Professor Yang has done has sat there and talked with me about my own interests and what I'm going to be interested in doing um, and we've come up with a reading program, a realistic reading program together and, uh, and we sit there and we meet once a week and we talk about the reading of the week um, in Chinese, and then she gives me a little bit of a little bit of work to do um, on my own. And it's, I mean, it's really nice. You can't, you know, it's all about moving periodically, step by step, and she's helped me do that. The institute is very well organized. The teachers are truly professional and excellent. I like all of my professors I've had so far. And I also liked the friendliness of the teachers. They have become friends of mine. They're very warm and allow me to enter their lives. And I have had them in my house. So it's, it's really an open relationship, a friendly relationship. And I didn't honestly expect that because I didn't know much about China. So it was a surprising, positive experience. Um, last year, one of their, uh, like the grad students that they send over from China was one of my pretty good friends. So we hung out outside of this. Um, one of the teachers I had is, is it working in the Confucius Institute. I know most of the people here, which makes it kind of a fun, comfortable area. They have a really great library full of books in Chinese, books in Chinese and English, and just a bunch of really helpful guides. And everyone there is really helpful and willing to um, share their knowledge. They have reading books. They have children's books in Chinese. They have books in English about China. They offer a library with uh, recordings and books and things like that uh, that I've really taken advantage of to help supplement what is not in the textbooks. Something that I think a lot of the students here should take advantage of is coming in and asking for homework help 
just because sometimes the grammar is overwhelming. Sometimes you have no idea what your book is asking you to do. Sometimes you are completely confused about the reason for a sentence structure. And we have a group of people here who are completely willing to help you. And it just takes so much of the stress and anxiety out of studying Chinese. We're all over not just this county, but Prince William County, Arlington, Loudoun, et cetera, teaching workshops. Uh, we might have 90 people come to a workshop at a time and, and offer possibly uh, 20 or 30 of those a year. In, in addition to helping to teach a few of our Chinese language courses, the Confucius Institute has brought wonderful resources to students studying Chinese at George Mason. One of the most tangible of those is scholarships from the Confucius uh, Institute headquarters. Uh, a number of Mason students have been able to go over to China uh, to take adva advantage both of short courses and uh, longer exposure to uh, Chinese language instruction. This doesn't hit a lot of people, but the people it does affect, are, are, their lives are little, li literally transformed in the process. I received the Confucius Institute scholarship to study for one semester at Beijing Language and Culture University, and I don't know how I could have graduated with a Chinese degree without having done that. Just because learning in America is not the same as learning in China. And so what you learn when you're studying abroad is so vastly different than what you learn in the classroom. Not having that opportunity, I don't think I would, my, my degree would have as much value to it. To live in another country and to completely immerse myself in another culture and learn about it and it just, fascinated me and then we got to travel a lot while we were there so we got to experience not only the Chinese culture but others and it was just I, it's hard to explain it was just a, an incredible experience to be able to live abroad and my friends probably think I'm crazy most of the time when I start talking about China I just loved it more than anything and it was I can't wait to go back. One of uh, my Chinese friends who is going to Beijing Language and Culture University. She returned at the same time that I was going to do my scholarship. So she was at the same university as me, at the same time as me, and we would meet up, have lunch, that kind of stuff. I even ended up going to her hometown and staying with her family for a weekend and experiencing authentic China. Um, so I think like without kind of those connections, I would have missed out on a lot of different facets of the Chinese life because being in Beijing and being at a university isn't the same as going into kind of these outside settings where it's more daily life of Chinese people. Probably the coolest experience I had while in China was attending an authentic wedding. And so we got to see, you know, the firecrackers going off at dawn and the giant red arch. The entire wedding ceremony was just completely different than what we do in the United States. We had the like roses pinned on to us so people could ask us for help and we got pictures with so many members of the family just because we were the only Westerners probably in the town at that time. Um, so everyone was very, very excited that we were there and we were very excited to be there. I think any person, young or old, who ventures into a new country and a new language is a very brave person. And no matter, you feel instantly a little lost and a little vulnerable. The food at the grocery store doesn't look the same. Uh, you studied things in a book, but all of a sudden you speak to a human being and they say something you didn't study in the book. Um, the Confucius Institute does a ton of stuff. They are very focused on culture and how to help foreigners live and work in China and travel there. So they teach you about the cities, how to use the ATMs there, how to travel. The, the journey of, of going from, from really not understanding uh, anything about any language to all of a sudden beginning to, to have even some basic conversations with a taxi driver or to be able to bargain something, trying to buy a, a piece of clothing or ordering food. I mean, each of these uh, events that normally in our daily life uh, we take for granted uh, becomes a great adventure. And in fact, uh, each of these small moments become uh, very, very memorable. My involvement with Confucius Institute started with uh, 
Mr. Gao, who invited us to travel to China and uh, perform over there. And uh, we had a wonderful time. We started out with a jazz ensemble taking classes in Chinese through the Confucius Institute. And it was absolutely wonderful, except for one thing, which is I couldn't learn any Chinese. But my young students did very well. So we spent a few days in uh, Shanghai at the conservatory and then perform at the Shanghai Concert Hall, part of a live radio broadcast. And then we went, took the train, wonderful train ride up to Beijing, and we did uh, two concerts there at the, at the Confucius Institute, and then also the conservatory in Beijing. For the students, it was life-changing. This was like an entire year of being in the classroom, because when the students came back, they were inspired. And again, they saw how their music could affect others. We now have partnerships with well over 12 different uh, conservatories of music, of dance, of art, uh, normal universities, so it's gone way beyond our formal partner into a whole range of partnerships around the arts. We've had students who have gone, we've had faculty who have gone, we've had military bands who have come here from China. It's really quite rich. The Confucius Institute organizes trips for high school students, and particularly here in Fairfax County, we uh, used to organize it through the Confucius Institute at George Mason, so we had students from several high schools all together. The first trip was over 30 some students, I think it was 35 students, and it was just opening up my mind because I had never been to Asia before, and that really started in me a passion, or almost like a fiery passion for China and a quest to know more and to learn more. Unfortunately, because I haven't had the opportunity to travel to China, um, I felt that I've been at a little bit of a, a disadvantage, especially from the cultural standpoint. So many of those things that you learn when you're immersed in uh, that specific culture. And the Confucius Institute has been a way for me uh, to really sort of bridge that gap. The people of the Confucius Institute represent a larger community of supportive people and that on very specific individual basis, we're there to walk people through these early stages of the experience. So for people who want to learn um, about the whole comprehensive experience rather than just grammar and vocabulary, uh, the Confucius Institute is a really fantastic way to do that. The Confucius Institute has helped a lot um, mainly with, with cultural understanding. Uh, they offer lots of events. We've learned about Chinese holidays. We've learned about Chinese food, how to make it, how to properly eat it, uh, traditions and customs that you don't traditionally learn just through learning a language, uh, but are as equally as important. The thing is, like in my mind, when I think of events through the Confucius Institute, I'm like, then they made that food that one time, and then they made that food that other time, because certain things stick in my mind as a college student. Uh, I come in and they're like celebrating somebody's birthday one day, the next day they have some sort of Chinese festival going on, you know. There are, like, there are way too many Chinese festivals. Uh, to celebrate the Harvest Festival, uh, a bunch of us gathered at the Confucius Institute. There were about 30 of us, uh, and we made lanterns, and we learned how to properly eat sunflower seeds. Uh, we ate dumplings and um, really learned about why this festival is so important to Chinese culture uh, and how families celebrated, how it was really a time for family and people all uh, traveled to, to be with their entire family to celebrate this day. One of the highlights, I would say, are the culture days when we travel to Fairfax County High Schools with a trunk. And the trunk is filled with art pieces and it's filled with instructional, educational materials. And we're trying to really get the students excited so in the schools, in the high schools, they will also learn Chinese. And that was really fascinating because we felt like we just convinced 100 children that they want to have Chinese at their school. So we're spreading the influence of campus all over Fairfax County. If you go around the counties and talk to the K-12 teachers who are teaching about China, they will tell you how we provided them the resources and the training uh, so that for years to come, for tens of thousands of students, 
the effect of the Confucius Institute will be felt. Uh, the Confucius Institute has a language buddy program uh, and it's actually really great. I've met uh, a few people uh, who have come over from China uh, who speak little English and my Chinese is not the best so it's a great way for us to, uh, it's a leveler. Uh, we're both nervous about our language skills uh, but we both want to help each other. Uh, it's a great way for me to work on my weaknesses, such as pronunciation and just to become more comfortable in a normal talking environment rather than uh, a very structured classroom setting. You can set up times with your language buddy and meet up, grab some food, and just talk in Chinese, ask for help with your homework, help them with their homework. It's kind of an exchange. I mean, you can't just sit there and, and read Chinese and then speak about it with other Americans. I mean, you want to be thinking in the language. You want to engage with the language more so than just on paper. And if you're doing that with other Americans, you can't do that. I mean, you want to talk with Chinese people in Chinese. I mean, to think in the language, that's what it's about. Um, and the Confucius Institute helps you do that. Well, my most memorable moment was that the Chinese government was going to recognize Mason's Confucius Institute at its 2013 conference. Only 5% of the 400 Confucius Institutes in the 92 countries in the world that have Confucius Institutes. Only 5% get this recognition. One of the things that I'm most proud of is the way the Confucius Institute has helped to bring together the faculty, students, and community members who are interested in China. And that's fostered a very nice sense of family, almost. The great thing about the Confucius Institute here at Mason is that it's all sort of they're all sort of a family, and they really have done very well at encouraging me to say, listen, you have a talent for this, uh, and this is worth uh, sticking it out. Um, so they're with me in the classroom. They're with me when I take tests. They're with me when I'm studying new material, um, and really have taught me the right way. There's always something going on and they're always really nice. They're, they're helping people out, you know, they care about each other and uh, they definitely have taken care of me. I absolutely love it. It's my fascination for China, for the Chinese people, the Chinese culture, the Chinese language. And I've had only really wonderful positive experiences. I love the people here and I call them my Confucius family. And they always say I'm one of their family members. So it has become more than just being a student here. It's more like a family relationship. I feel very comfortable here and I wouldn't miss it for anything. Uh, studying a language offers uh, the best possible window into a new culture, into a new way of, of thinking about the world. More people speak English in China than speak English in the rest of the world. And it's really, really vital that Americans now take on the, ch the task of mastering Chinese. Otherwise, I think the, uh, the dialogue is, is one-sided, it's imbalanced. The more mutual experience we have, the more the Chinese know about us, and equally, the more we know about them and their language and culture, I think the better the prospects are for a, 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 a relationship between the two countries that's fundamentally constructive, and that's really the ultimate goal. These are uh, perhaps uh, the, the, the two most important nations right now in, uh, in, in the world. And it's very important that uh, students, new generations of students uh, from both countries know as much as possible uh, about the culture uh, of, the, of the other. So there's a, there's a fascinating, I think, leverage that, again, the first five years have successfully staged. So the next five should be exponentially significant. I can't wait to see what the next celebration will be about. Well, I speak Chinese. Thank you. Bye.